Hi guys, welcome back to Taylor Talks Trades. This week's episode is our 50th and we're down here in London filming with Charlie Mullins who sold Pimlico Plumbers for 145 million. He's going to tell us his full story. I hope you enjoy. Hi Charlie, yeah. welcome to Taylor Talks Trades. James, good to have you here, and um, I've heard all about your Taylor's Talks trades. I am here, it's going very well, uh, helping a lot of young people in the trade, and obviously a lot of uh, older people in it. So, you know, if I can be part of that, then it's wonderful. Brilliant, and thanks for having us here at your luxury penthouse. This is something else. Yeah. And I think, I think this will be a super inspiration for anybody who's looking to get into the trades. This is where you can Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's about 11, mil, 11 million pound penthouse. Tom Jones lives above us. Uh, I know it's not unusual, but he does. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's like what you dream of, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, um, you know, for me, it was an inspiration to earn money and do well. Obviously, I didn't expect it to be as well as it's gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think nobody did. So let's go back to the start. How did you get into the trades? Yeah, well, that's a simple one. Um, it ain't what you're expecting to hear, but I used to bunk off school and go and help the local plumber. This was in uh, North London. And, you know, he used to say to me, you know, there's no point in going to school, come out with me. I think he used to give us half a crown a day, two bob a day, sorry, two bob a day, and buy us egg and chips. And that was like a dream, you know. And, um, yeah, that's what I'd done. I bunked off school. Mum and Dad didn't know. I think Mum probably knew a bit, you know what I mean? Um, and I used to go out with him working in these amazing properties. Like, I don't know if you know it up here, but... Primrose Hill and Parliament Mill Fields and Amsterdam. And it was like, you know, just, there was so much money there and everybody loved this Bill guy. And what attracted me to him, he was in the area and he was a bit of a scallywag anyhow. When I say scallywag, you know, he, he, you know, just, you know, he wasn't like a pushover kind of thing. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, he had a motorbike, a car, nice home, jewelry, nice clothes, all of this money, he just had everything that we never had. Mm -hmm. And he, just, he said to me then, you know, if you want to earn loads of money and never be out of work and do an apprenticeship in a building trade or in the plumbing, he said, and that's, that, that's what'll happen. That's how it'll be for you. And he's right. You know, I've earned loads of dosh and um, I've never been out of work. Brilliant. But, but it's a great inspiration and, and probably add a bit more to that because you don't know of course things inspire you. You get a lot of guys or girls, they like the footballers, they like the cars, you know, they like their lifestyle. Um, but, you know, I think you've got a better chance of being a successful tradesman than what you have a footballer. Yeah. Um, and, I, would, and, I would agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, in other words, you know, they're yeah. one in a million. And tradesmen, yeah. if, you, if you say that's what you're going to do, you're going you're gonna to wind up, you know, never out of work, earn a load of money. And did you see from Bill then that, He's got money, he's got the car, he's got the motorbike, the nice holidays, that sort of stuff. And then you went, I want a bit of that. And you just sort of mirrored what he... Exactly. He was... Exactly it. That, that was it, you know. I mean, you know, I was about nine years of age and I used to bunk off for about... So I was about 11. Then then we moved the areas and I had to go to school again. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the good news is I left at 15, um, as soon as I can, or as soon as I could, I mean. And... Um, you know, I look back now and I know it was a big mistake, you know what I mean? I had very little education and uh, I should have left at 14, you know what I mean? I'd have been out there, bigger company. And, yeah. you know, we're all good at something. And once you find what you're good at, you know, you get on with it. I mean, talk about the seeds were sown. Like with Bill Worse, it was a bit of a one of the lads anyhow. And if he had been a bank robber, I'd have been a bank robber. Probably wound up in Nick. Yeah. But... Whatever Just he was you doing. you could see the success in him and you said, I've got to do what he's doing. Was that the first person you'd seen that was yes. successful in your life? Well, so, like, you first really... kind of role model as such? Yeah. And you never really seen money, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I remember we was doing a job in Amsterdam and I was digging this pipe up, a lead pipe, and um, we had frozen. And I was like lapping people, I'm giving them tea sandwiches. And I'm digging it up. And, you know, I, I don't think it was a great shirt I had on, like, a, I don't know what you call one of Fred Perry things. And uh, all the mud was getting all over me, which you think is great. And, uh, and uh, the, the woman said, um, oh, you know, your mum's not going to be happy about that. And, um, you know, I just went, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever. And, that. 
And, you know, I'm just going to say what he said. And Bill said, look, if they ever say that you again, say you ain't got a mum and they give you money. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that's what yeah, he yeah, said. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, you know. So it was it, almost a get up. It, Yeah. It, I mean, he was getting tips. And I'm just sort of saying that, you know, it was all about trying to get money. If I'm being honest, I used to think, Bill, it sounds silly now, but I used to think at night he went back and robbed his asses. Just because he had so much money? Well, because he had so and, much. And, and you didn't think that money could come from well, just you, you know, I mean, look, the other thing is he had a motorbike, and so in the middle of the night, he'd go out, one, two o'clock, all the neighbours, oh, he's got that bike again, boom. What's he up to? What's he up to? And, you know, I, I got to know it in the end. He's going out on emergency jobs because he, he don't need the car or the van. Yeah. And, but for a long time, I'm thinking, you know, everyone put in my head, he, he goes back and robs them. And we was in this place in Amsterdam, Amsterdam, and he, he's un, undone the bathroom window and he's doing the blow lamp it was, we were doing all that. And he's saying, let's run off. I've got him. Like, he leaves the window open and comes back at night, you know what I mean? But that's how you think as a kid. Yeah. But it's so obvious he don't because they, you know, they, they wouldn't have you back. But yeah. I was convinced that he's got all this money, he must go and rob them. Yeah. But then the more I, I worked with him, the more people just like idolised him, you know. Everything was first names, and and uh, they'd be giving him dinner, they'd be giving him tips, and, and like they're like waiting with open arms, and just couldn't work it out, you know. I mean, just couldn't work out how people could like like you so much. And I take it you really liked that, and you've you've went on to become more or less famous now. And I, I take it more or less, that. <laughs> more or less. That's unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> More or less. Sorry, no, you've become, no, you've, look, you've, 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 you've become look, hugely famous. And, and, thank you. And, and obviously, <laughs> obviously went, look, look yeah. it, that wasn't expected, but it's nice to but be recognised. Did, 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 did you see that and you went, I want, I want some of that again? Yeah. So it was like the money, the cars, and then it's almost that All way. a lot, you know, I mean, it, it, comes a, it can come as a package, but, you know, there ain't many plumbers that are, you know, evidently I'm the richest plumber in the world and the most famous. I mean, that Mario guy, he's not real, is he? And... Uh, you know, and, and, you know, it's quite an achievement. And was it Bill, did Bill give you an apprenticeship then, or was it No, Bill didn't give me an apprenticeship. So he, he just sowed the seeds. He sowed the seeds. And then when I left school, we moved the area. And, you know, I was still doing work and odd jobs here and there. And um, that was it. It was in my mind. I've got to do an apprenticeship. And I remember talking to the the uh, the careers teacher, right, I write pest you know what I mean? Proper busybody, you know what I mean? Going, oh, what are you going to do? I'm going to be a plumber. Plumber? You know, Really? Like, and, and he, he didn't want to know. Like, which is, and I, I remember him and I'm thinking, he was looking over them glasses they have, you know, when they, you know, I mean, he'd have to have good eyes to see out of them, wouldn't he? Fucking thick things they were. But anyway, he's looking over the top of them and he's going, um, oh, okay, well, you're, you're going in the building. So it's a bit like, don't mention it. Yeah. And um, the yeah, best thing ever. You got, best you thing ever. You got the apprenticeship and then how did that go? Was that. Uh, how did that go? I don't, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I don't think it went great. Yep. I'll tell you for why, because, you know, when you get into an apprenticeship, you sign a contract, and a good value about it is you can't change jobs and move around. And, be and believe me, they wanted to get rid of me a thousand times, and I wanted to leave a thousand times, because I was getting three quid a week, mates were getting 12 quid a week, working in, <coughs> I don't know, Burton's or Taylor's or something. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, you know, you think I've got to go and earn that money instead of this three quid. So, so it, it ties you into a job. That's why I'm a great um, believer in apprentices because you go through them teething problems. And what I've done halfway through the company, which is unusual, I'd had a fallout with the plumber geezer who I was working with there, mm -hmm. who's like old school, you know what I mean? And, um, and, uh, and so I changed on to another company mm -hmm. halfway through the apprenticeship. And that was the best thing I've done because I learned a completely... You know, different set of yeah, everything, yeah. yeah. And I thought to myself, maybe so they should more do that. More and all yeah. Do all uh, and I've gone from this one learning this, and then when I went over here, I thought, bloody hell, I've, I've seen another side of it. So, you know, in a way, it'd be good if they'd done apprenticeships where you stay with one company two years and had the other two. Uh, yeah. I don't think they will, but for me, it'll or, or just fuck about and they get rid of you. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was it, but you know, we wouldn't be here talking if it weren't for the apprenticeship. And, you know, gone on from there to do many things. When did you know you were going to start Pimlico Plumbers? Was, was that, um, did you get, serve your apprenticeship and then you're straight yeah, into that? Or did, this is a true story. Like, the day I finished my apprenticeship, or the day before, 
I was in the office there and I'd already started building up a little customer base, you know, nicking a few customers off them. And, um, you know, like, that's what you do. You start building up. And um, I finished it at 19. And uh, I think the day before it ran out, it was lit. he didn't like me in here, the manager. Well, I say he didn't like me. He was just, he was just a pest, you know what I mean? He will not like, you know, he was just like following, following what he's being told to do. And um, anyhow, and, and he said, look, you know, as you know, it's all finished tomorrow. I said, yeah, when, when can I leave? He said, we can go whenever you want, kind of thing. Because he's an unwritten rule, apprentices move on, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I was already having time off work and doing jobs and, you know, and, um, yeah, so that was it. I stopped then and then, boom, self-employed straight away. And, you know, never not been self-employed. Never. I, I, well, to be honest, I, I signed on a company. Is it called signing on? I signed on some company once we were doing maintenance for Tesco just so I could get a mortgage, you know what I mean? Yeah. They put me on the books for a few months. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but it's not like the real thing. Um, that was it. Pre done, done the apprenticeship, self-employed, started building up a customer base. Messed about with a couple of different plumbing companies, Apollo Plumbing. I mean, fucking Apollo Plumbing. Why would you call it Apollo Plumbing? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I think the spaceship was up there then. And, you know, you know it's meaningless, isn't it? You know what I mean? And, um, you know, we had a couple of other, you know, two Bob names. And, um, and, and, and at that time, I was working with another guy, brother-in-law, but that don't work for me having partners, you know? Mm -hmm. Fucking bad enough in marriage, but having a business partner... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, me and him split. I was just, like, jobbing and all that. And then, strange story is, really, um, I start working around Pimlico area. And uh, the guy I was working with is Sammy Fox's um, dad. You know Sammy Fox, the page three? I thought you might. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, like... So I used to work I've with Pat. I've heard you mention it on another podcast before that. Oh, one, got you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but, but anyhow, so, you know, Pat was, it was a carpenter. Unfortunately, he's dead now. Um, and so we started working in the Pimlico area, doing bits and pieces, and the state agents was called Pimlico Properties. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, Pat said um, he was doing a carpentry and was converting flats and, you know, doing quite well, if I'm being honest, like all tradesmen do and will do. And... Um, and then the, the Pat said, I'm going to go off for three weeks and help um, Sammy to get going. Well, I mean, he never fucking picked a saw up again, you know what I mean? That was him done, you know what I mean? He just, loads of money he was earning. Unfortunately, it didn't work out in the end. And so I'll carry on in Pimlico and I'm building up a customer base. So important to build up a customer base. So do you have a lot of repeat customers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, blimey, yeah. Um, but, but... And what about the branding? So I know that Pimlico is massively famous for its yeah. branding, the uniforms and all that stuff. Did Bill ever have anything like that or anybody before? Or no. Did, was this your no. thinking? When did the marketing and the branding No, I think, I think my, my idea was that, you know, once I got Pimlico going, um, and then, so John this day and said, I have a room in the basement. Do you want to rent it or something? And I'm like, is he mad? What does a plumber want a room for? I just could not work it out. You know, today it's easy and I'm thinking, he's trying to have me over here. You know, damp old boat. So in those days, it would have just been man in a van. They wouldn't have had an office right. or anything and, like that. And an answer it's machine. It's more common now, probably. Well, but. it's normal now. Yeah. But I mean, you, you say to a plumber, like, just jobbing around and, and say, there's an office, you, you run a mile, don't you? Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe, maybe I'll store my stuff in there. I just could not work it out. And I, and I got the room and I put answer machine in. And, um, and that was quite effective, doing the jobs, coming back. And I thought, oh, it's all right. Got a couple of desks. And then, you know, I realised answer machine ain't the answer. So you're, you're very dubious at the time. And I thought, um, you know, I'll, I'll take on somebody part-time. So I took on this old biddy, like a retired school teacher. And, uh, I mean, she was worse than me answering the phones in the end. But, you know, she was yeah. too old. But, you know, that was the start. So you've got to go through it a bit. And then... You know, she sort of helped her out of the door kind of thing. It was too much for her. Then I got a part-time office lady in doing the phones, and I was doing the phones. And then all of a sudden, I, I stopped jobbing, doing work, and started employing people, or self-employed. And, you know, it's, you all start with one, and just building it and building it. And I have to say, one of the questions a lot of people ask, um, you know, how, how can you scale your business up? How can you make loads of money? And, and when I give them the answer, they already know the answer, and, but they, they don't really want to know it. And 
it's like a double-sided um, sort of double-edged sword. The worst thing in business is what? People. All right, employing people. Employing people. That's right. It's, it's the hardest thing in it. Yeah, well, that's the worst thing about a business is employing people. Mm-hmm. But it's also the best because mm-hmm. that's where the money comes from. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's not a tip, it's just common sense. you got five plumbers out in vans, you get five lots of money. If you've got ten, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And... It's questions asked all the time. And all, everybody keeps saying to me, but I'm doing everything and I'm estimating, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing. And you go, well, there's a shock and you're running out of time. Yeah, how did you know that then? You know what I mean? Can't go on all day and I'm working from a cupboard under the stairs and all that. And Did you, know, you, did you find it easy to let go and let other people take control of them, those areas? Because a lot of business owners, especially in the construction I know that they, they struggle to let go and let somebody go and do the jobs and then sort of make that transition to maybe of course answering phones yeah. doing admin doing coaching I mean I was in the office I was like a tiger in a cage you know what I mean I'm like oh, what's going on here you know what I mean and it, oh I hated it absolutely hated it but you know it's like you know captain can't sort of steer the ship and stoke the boiler can he you got to be in one or the other and then you know I learned that you know I had an I had idea of, of the system we was going to run and basically, I wanted to change the sort of bad stigma about plumbers, you know, turning up late, arse hanging out of trousers, no uniform, rush the old van, not being transparent, not clearing the job, you know, overcharging, you know, I mean, all these things. And, and I, I'll be honest, I've just done a list of, you know, as I was an apprentice and I was turning up at places, the, the lady of the house would be saying, oh, yes, we had another company out and they didn't finish and they left the mess and, you know, it's still leaking. And, you know, didn't turn up, all, all the normal things. And, you know, like you hear now, say, I said he'd be on Monday and he didn't come till Thursday. Yeah. And then he crept off again. And, you know, and I thought to myself, well, as a plumber, I don't want to get that, I don't want that off people because, you know, I think we're better than that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I always learned to, when you're doing the job as an ass, if you're going for a cup of tea or you're not coming in or, you know, don't use all that, I've got a broken arm, I've got a, dodgy van yeah. just be honest with be people because they're not stupid happened, yeah. and, and that's what I've done and I say to people look I've got another job and yeah, that's not a problem and, you know, communication um, that's it but the main thing is to be truthful and you know yourself we used to get a lot of customers ring up and they go look can you come and finish this job and I used to say to them what's he done broke his arm yeah do you know that then well that's what they say they've done don't they and then you talk to another partner and she goes Oh, uh, look, yeah, he ain't been back for three days. I said, it's his van, and it? Yeah, how do you know that then? Well, you know, that's what they say, don't they? It's van, van, um, broke the arm, uh, missus sick, cat ain't drunk his milk, postman's birthday. They're all excuses, aren't they? Yeah. But rather than just say... Just be honest. I've been out on the booze or, you know, something like that, or, you know, it's been a, a, something happened in the family. I, I think it's important to be honest in business. Yeah. Um, well, probably important to be honest in your life, isn't it? Yeah. Even though, you know, we, we're not quite as honest as when we're younger because we don't understand it so much, do we? Anyhow, we got, I've got this office up and running, start employing people, and it went very, they call it organic, but gradual. You know, one person, two, three. And when I got to 20, I thought to myself, God, I'm great now. Nothing, you know, I'm 20 down the line if, to go, you know what I mean? Yeah. So... That's how I started thinking. But, you know, you could have 100 people, and if you ain't got it right, they can go tomorrow. But that was my safety now. I think, well, at least I'm like 21st before, you know, I'm going to struggle kind of thing. And the more people I employed, the more successful the business become. Simple as that. And, and it's a nightmare employing them. But I have learned over the years there's some good people out there uh, who, who are happy to work with you, as long as you're rewarded them well. And same with the office. I mean, I, I thought, oh, I was doing wages. I can't even add up. <laughs> no one who was short. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the wages. I was doing like... Um, so did you just learn everything completely yeah. on the job as you went and just... I was just doing yeah. all these things. like, And you think, but you think you're doing okay. And then I'm answering phones and like, you know, at times and, and uh, you know, and going around looking at the jobs, estimating. <laughs> and like, I think to myself, you don't realise other people can do these things. And then all of a sudden, it got explained to me, because we all learn from somebody. It got explained to me, it's worth, I think the word's called, you need to learn to negotiate. And, uh, and that's what delegate. I've done. Was it delegate? 
Delegate. Delegate, like give jobs out. Well, what am I saying, the guy shall think it was done a bit of negotiating delegate. in the morning, you yeah, yeah, delegate, you're right. I thought myself, I don't know if I've got that right. Negotiate's trying to get a pan though, isn't it? Yeah. Delegates Delegate. like handing the jobs yeah. out to make more, I guess. You haven't been stalking me, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. Yeah, delegate. Didn't really understand it. And then someone explained it. And, um, you know, get someone in to do the estimating. But you always think you can't afford it, but, you know. And then it's like, get someone in who can answer phones and get someone in who can do a Are you okay with taking the risks of that? Because it is always a bit scary when you employ somebody to come in and do a job and you don't know if you can afford it at that time. Well, that, that's it. It's like... But you soon find out. Well, you know what I mean? You either get it right or you go bust, don't You've you really? You've got to get it right. That's, yeah. There's no but other choice. You can afford it because we don't realise what we can do. You know what I mean? We just don't realise. And, you know, I thought I wasn't a bad plumber, but I worked out I'm a better person to run a plumbing company yeah. than, than clear block drains, even though, you know, there's plenty of dosh in that. Mm -hmm. um, and I say, I think we're all good at something. And, and when, you, when you get that, and if you're enjoying it, and, you know, my motivation was the money. You know I mean? I had family, I think, uh, how many children? Probably two or three. I mean, I had four, like, you know, eventually, like yeah. with our uh, first wife. Um, but, yeah, so I think we had two or three children, um, two then, I think. And... I bought, I know, it don't sound much now, I think. I bought my first house, I think I was uh, 23. And uh, probably don't sound a big deal now, but, you know, years ago, people didn't buy houses, you know what I mean? Like, your mums and dads and family, you know, never going to be owning an house, that air type of people. And uh, it was nine grand, and I got 100% mortgage. I mean, how stupid are they giving you money without charging you? And I think I got it a mortgage off the council they was doing. Yeah. And that's why I had to make out I was on this company. But anyhow, um, yeah, and, and, you know, of course it's been ups and downs, but, you know, it, it's, you know, where it's got today, and, and it's helped a lot of people on charity, it's helped a lot of people that's worked for us, low, about 1,200 apprentices we had through the books. Um, so, so, of course it's downside, but, you know, undoubtedly it's, when did it really start to scale and take off? So, because you, you mentioned you were about twenty odd people there, yeah. employing twenty people, and then you went on to employ was it four hundred in the four fifty, four fifty. So, yeah. when did it really just start to? Well, I don't think it ever goes from you know twenty this to hundred. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it's, it's all gradual, and I think that's the better way. You know, I learned again. You know, if you come to the front too quick, you can't stay there. You know what I mean? And, you know, also learn, you know, a, a jockey don't get off a winning horse if you think you want a winner. So I knew it was a winner, but it was trying to get it home, like, kind of thing. And, um, but it, it just on gradual basis. But the real turning point, so it was 79 we started. And look, we nearly went bust in 1991. Mm -hmm. You know, I bought a, bought a, a building for, for us to move out of this place. What happened, I took the one room on in the basement, I took the next one, next one, then I had all the basement, I took the lease on. And that's how it grows, you know what I mean? And, and then um, we outgrew that, and so I found this building, about a quarter of a million pound, and uh, borrowed some money off the bank, which I don't normally do. I mean, they're crooks in suits, aren't they? And um, the same archi not architect, surveyor come round, and he said, right, yeah, we'll, we'll lend you the money, quarter of a million or two thirty or something, I'll put a deposit. And I ripped it all apart, the company did. And then, and then this was in December. I went off to Australia, just bought a Range Rover, like 25 grand, like, you know, everything couldn't go wrong. Gone to Australia for a month, come back in about March, April, the bank sent this busybody round again to value it, and he said it's valued at 50 grand. I'm saying, what? You know, and, and then what had happened? Because I ripped it all out, and he said, to put it right, and then the bank was panicking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think interest rate was 17%. But thank God what I'd done, I had another building that I bought and I borrowed half the money on that, which meant they can't really claim it back. You know, and it was good advice. I mean, I don't listen to many people, but there's certain things that you have to listen to. Anyhow, you know, they so much pressure on us. Trying to make us go bankrupt, you know what I mean? And, and, and you know, I mean, I've got no time for bank bankers whatsoever. You know what I mean? The, the bank I'm... Or was with Pimlico, which was, um, I changed the bank. I changed everybody at the time. It was all going wrong because they were just giving me stupid advice. They was just out for themselves. I got rid of the bank. I got rid of financial advice. Every member of staff went because they weren't really. And we changed everything. We changed it to payment on completion. 
And that was a big turning point because most businesses go bust because someone owes them money. Yep. So you got the cash flow really fast then? Yeah, well, uh, you know. This, uh, the engineers, when they were out in the field yeah. on the jobs, they could take payment by card. Yeah, but of course that idea weren't really out there and somehow I'd come up with it. And I think we, we had 80 grand owing and we owed the bank 80 grand, you know what I mean? But if the bank's going to close you and all of a sudden we stopped credit, got... Um, I don't know if there was machines then which you walked around with, I can't remember, but we, we it was moved. just payment on completion. Yeah, mainly it was like... You'll get your payment when you get like it. I give you, wouldn't I, a check or yeah. something. And, um, and what I've done, we, we had a deal with all engineers that so they don't get paid yes, unless they collect. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I said, it works, you know what I mean? It works. Um, and, and we carried on running it like on the company. And in the end, I was bringing in over a million pounds a week with the VAT. And it's a true story. They would not cut, they, out of all the weeks worth of work they've done, they might be 20 grand short when they're paying in overall. And, you know, that's nothing, you know what I mean? And you're still going to get that 20 grand because, you know, they ain't going to get their half of it. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's what we got it to. Some weeks it was nothing. We could, I mean, I can't believe now we could go around and bring in a million pounds in, you know, cards and checks yeah. and cash. And, um, yeah, so that was a massive turning point. We bought a building, done it up, outgrew the building, got a railway arch to go with it. And now we've got about 5,000 square foot. All of a sudden, as a building comes up, an old warehouse, 30 odd thousand square foot. Went round to look at it, and they had a couple of sitting tenants, like car people, I don't know, you know, storing them vintage cars and some other busybody in there doing private detective work. So I took it on with a couple of sitting tenants. And uh, it was a gamble, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, tenants can be a nightmare, but you know, I worked that one out, you know what I mean? Everyone's saying to me, oh, you won't get rid of them. The geezer like that who's got this vintage car, he's, he's like one of them, I don't know what you call them, like university, like, like stuck up person, but thinks he's clever. He said, he, he said you, you never get rid of He had one floor, 7,000 square foot, and he had these cars that he'd take up in the lift and put like a, a balloon around them and all that. And I thought, and they said, you know he'll have you over, Charlie, and all that. He ain't on the lease, he ain't on, he won't have me over because the lift will be out of action straight away. He's fucked, isn't he? Yep. No, he's done, isn't he? Uh, that and the water would have gone off. Electric, he's done, isn't he? But we didn't have to get to that. And uh, and then, you know, he weren't on the lease and, and you know, I understand all that business. And he was paying like pound notes for people and I said, look, oh, I don't deal with that, which I never have done in 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 business because I feel, you know, the best way to do it is the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, anyhow, so I'll get him on the lease and I'll say, I'll tell you what I'll do. And he's like, you know, one of them more, can't have a meeting with you, I can't do, you know, well, we've got to sort it. And I said, my bookkeeper woman, I said, she's like a fucking Rockwiler, you know what I mean? And um, I said, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll put you on the lease at the old money. Mm-hmm. It's been on this thing, you know, and how fucking stupid are you, sir? You know? So did you get, you get in there and then you made that all work, so... You, this is when you started to get into like the yeah, hundreds well, of employees and every, all the vans or... That's it. But once we got the building, building and I thought, now I've got to get rid of him and it's simple. Yeah. Up the rent. Mm-hmm. And then he says, I want to stay here forever. So I want you to stay forever. Another year went by, up to it as much as I can, you know what I mean? And he thought, oh, come over one. I said, oh, I've got to move. I said, well, that's a shock, isn't it? He said, I can't afford it. And, I'm thinking, and you're clever. And the other pests just went because, you know, we, um, you know, we weren't very polite to them, you know what I mean? Yeah. We wouldn't let them have their part. You know, well, that's what you do, isn't it? You know what I mean? Did you end up filling that? So that was 30,000 square foot? 30,000 square foot. We put, put a few bits on it and we had it like packed out. And this yeah. is when Pimlico became, it had its own canteen, workshop, yeah. body repair shop. Well, we had a workshop at the other place in canteen. Yeah. And um, we tried to do as much in house as we could. And at that time, it was, it was great. You know what I mean? Because you're in control. I'll I tell you what, while well, I got my own mechanics, we... We used to use a local mechanic company, and um, and, and then we didn't have that many vans, but however many vans. I went round there one day, he had more my vans in there, off the road, than what I've got on the road. And it got you over a barrel, wasn't it? Yeah. So I got a mechanic in, and it changed it, you know what I mean? And we had an amazing workshop there in the end, spraying, proper spray booth, everything sorted. And so you, you, you know, you, when you're in control of everything, same like the canteen thing, you know what I mean? We had a canteen, we had like, I think three people, and a proper chef, the geezer had one of them hats and everything. 
And, uh, but it was a great thing, one of the best things we ever done. It sounds stupid and corny, but it gets people in early, it gets people wanting to come to work, it keeps people going through the day. Great meeting place, bit of fun. You know, it's unbelievable. How many people did you employ in the, like, sort of at the peak of it all then? I say it was a little while ago. 450. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. We got to 450. Yeah. And we was we was growing and we could have gone more. Is that like hundreds of vans as well then, I'm guessing? So, How many? Like over 100, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. better guess again. No, we had about 300 vans, 280. Vans. Yeah, because yeah. most of you, you know, you've got to have more productive than none. So there yeah. might have been 150 people yeah. in, the, in there and the rest yeah. are out. Yeah. See, see the... I've seen, I think I've seen a video of it before with the, the call centre and you had all the like the, the dockets with the, the guy's jobs. Did that? Did you come up with that system? Yeah. Very basic system. I, I, I've learned in business a lot of people complicate it. And I used to say to people, like, it's not that Pimlico is so good, it's just that some of the rest are so bad. Mm. You know, you, you work out, all we used to do is turn up on time, smart and tidy, be transparent, do what you're supposed to do, charge the right money, and collect the money. It's not complicated, but people complicate it. So you just kept doing the good stuff to a high level, like simple stuff, but okay, really yeah, effective but and it's, over it's like, and over. You know, it's like, you know, if you, if, you, if you should be there at eight and you get there at nine, then you're one nil down, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, people don't want to see a dirty old van pull up out. And, you know, these are money people was working for. And, you know, the uniform. So all that just started coming and then the plumbing related number plates. I bought the first, I think, we didn't have every band, but we would have had every band in the end. But I think we had about 190 plumbing related number plates. Wow. The first one I bought was Drain. Yeah. And a DRA one then, I think. <clears throat> and uh, someone had put me onto it. Because I keep saying this, we all learn from someone. We ain't doing nothing new. Like, you'll come up here today and think, I'll fucking show him. I'll be getting a penthouse like this. <laughs> no, but you understand what I mean? The, the, You've already, you've already measured that, it up. I read, I read your book and it made me want to scale my roofing company. Like, that's yeah. what it did. And then it, it's probably allowed me to see that someone else has done it and it's possible it. then. And all you need is a wee glimmer of hope and then... And it's now, like, it's like now, now, see, now I'm here because I've got it to a level. I don't know how to yeah. take it beyond that. So. It, it, I'm just saying is that you don't know what you can achieve, but I think if you go for it enough, uh, you know, enough drive, enough enthusiasm, enough willpower and the hard work... Um, and you're realistic. I you know, saw one of your plates last night, big tap it was. Yeah, That was yeah. the first one we seen when we, we, we got into I mean, That was a tremendous uh, marketing tool. I think we started that off and loads of companies have done And my marketing guy said to me, I don't, early days, I don't reckon a number plate thing, Charlie. And he's good at the game. And I said, no. Nah. He said, well, I think customers are going to think if they can spend this money on them, are they overcharging? And, and I remember the Eddie Stall, but, you know, with the names on them, and, uh, and then we become like the Eddie Stall with the plumbing world, probably, mm -hmm. probably more known than them, if I'm being honest. And, you know, amazing marketing tool. We should, we should put them out there, um, like in London, they'd be, and we'd have spot the number plate, and when you got it, say where you ring in, say where it is, and we give 100 quid to a charity. Now, we used to do it on LBC, Chris Tarrant and all that, and uh, on Johnny Vaughan. And, uh, you know, you give about a grand away, but you're getting like... All day's advertising, you know what I mean? And, you know, it ain't complicated. We used to, you send them out and you send the list out and they're looking for, say, a toilet yep. and it ain't out there, you know what I mean? Yep. Cause, so you leave, no, what you do <laughs> And then you put another set of number plates in that, in that van because as soon as it leaves our office, everyone's on it, you know what I mean? And see, with the systems and, and things like that, how did that progress any over the years or did you always keep to what you knew with the... Like, do you know, the, the, the call would come in, they would write down the yeah. paper, to put it there well, for the plumber. Look, did, you, did you ever use technology at any point? To uh, well, they, when I come out of the call centre, you know, and then they, they moved in on our computers and what, you know what I mean? And that works, you know what I mean? It's same, same thing, isn't it? They just sort of writing it out. They should have to walk up and put it on the board and hand it out. But, when, you know, we just, yeah. I mean, we had a job system thing because we were doing probably two, two and a half thousand jobs a week. Wow. And... Uh, you know, when I'm just doing it, you know what I mean? It's enough just writing out a few job tickets. Um, yeah, look, you, you move along with technology, but I don't think we overdone the technology, you know what I mean? And again, same, same system. Job comes in, get the right guy, collect the money. Simple. Um, and, and as I say, look, the, the Pimlico just grew and grew. We got known as celebrity plumbers and all this nonsense. Um, 
you know, and, and, and the main thing is that, you know, they trusted us, you know what I mean? And lots of people, customers, all these, you know, well-to-do people in television star films, I just seem to get to know them all. And I go, you know, you, you people are not the cheapest in the world, but we know you're going to turn up, you're going to do the right job. If there's a problem, you come back. And that's simple, and, and that's it. You know the, what I mean? The brand was so big that it just you couldn't not trust it. Well, that's exactly it, you know. I mean, it and is did, important did you ever, to... Did you ever get nervous about putting yourself out there? Do you know, like, when you had that big company there and just, like, did, or, or did you just always think, that I just need to keep pushing and putting myself out there? Just keep pushing, you know what I mean? You just went out and you just I mean, we were proper 24 hours. I mean, I mean, Father Christmas weren't the only one that worked at Christmas. We had plumbers, canning staff, and, you know, very busy at that time. And... Again, people know it, you know what I mean? You're a proper 24 hour, you do a proper job, you charge the proper way. You were never scared of like the negative sort of criticism that would come your way when you kind of put yourself right well, look, out there. You, and, you know. Well, look, you're always going to get knockers, aren't you? And that's just part of business. But we, we were doing 2,000 jobs a week. 80% of them was return customer. Yeah. And that's why I said earlier in this, so important to build up a customer base. I didn't get it at first. Yeah. You know, building it up. And because I used to, when I was out there, and to be honest, when I was running Pimlico, some of the customers that I used to serve was, was still, were still, we still working for them. Most of them were dead, yeah. but there's still a few we were working for. Yeah. And, you know, I learned another thing we had a saying on Pimlico. You know, we, we put this across to a customer. When you become a Pimlico customer, we hope you're going to be with us for life. Yeah. And the only reason they, they, will go away from you is you ripped them off, ain't done a good job, or they're brown bread. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so we still got customers, or we still did have, and, and I realised the importance of building up a customer base. And there ain't, I can't think of, there ain't a plumbing company or building company in the world that would get 80% return work yeah. from the customer. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong, some of the customer might have used you four years ago, but... You know, and the best customer is an existing customer because they know what you charge, they know they've got to pay, they know what they expect, you know what I mean? Because the experience is so good and you've got all the branding and everything there with it, it's like it'd be hard to forget. Like, do you know, when you're adding the wee things in, like the private plates? Yeah. Like, they're not going to forget that. So they'll be like, who was, like, do you know, sometimes they maybe phone a plumber and guy comes out, it's a white van, no got yeah. any number plate or anything. They well, might, I think, I think maybe we... not remember that guy for the next time, but that's what I've got the brand. The and stigma stuff, all, all, right? uh, that was out there was bad. And, you know, I believe we had the best sign written vans on the road, mm -hmm. certainly the most classiest. I mean, Diner Rod said to me once, because they wanted to, uh, they wanted us to amalgamate with us. No, they wanted us to do work for them, and that's no. Then they wanted to amalgamate, and that's no. And then they wanted to buy us, and that's no. And then the guy said, he said, um, like this was, he, he was talking, and he, he said, you know, we, being himself, he said, we've got the best fans on the road. Well, do you want an illuminated orange fan sitting outside your ass? And we, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, it ain't classy, is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you walk down your road, you see one of them, you think, fuck, you know what I mean? They ain't at my ass, it's embarrassing. But air ones, yeah. they're like, oh, park it on the drive and that. I mean, yeah, it's important to have the right type of van. Yep. on the road. When did you get to the point that you felt you were going to sell the business? What did, when did that start to come about? Probably in the last couple of years. Look, we're, we're, we're going well. We're, you know, earning loads of money. We've gone through a couple of recessions mm -hmm. and, and existing customers got us through the second recession. Yep. First recession, we nearly went bust because we didn't have it right. And, and then I realised the value of... Sorry, to go back, what, what did you know have right, do you think? What did you Collecting learn? money. The, so it was the cash flow was the yeah. biggest thing then? Well, look, many things, so but doing, most... Too, too much volume of jobs, no getting paid in. Yeah, enough. I mean, you know, you can work 24 hours a day with no money. And, you know, we had a policy in the end, if the Queen rung us, she would have to give us a cheque. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, similar as that. Payment yeah. on completion was yeah, just the rule was for everybody, didn't matter. There was like, you know, it, and it worked, you know what I mean? But people said it, it wouldn't work, but, you know, you've always got to or whatever you say, don't go with, you know, because I say to everybody, all these people that come up, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And I said, well, if you lot are right, everyone would be a millionaire, wouldn't they? Yeah. But who's the millionaire? Yeah. Like, and I'm not saying that trying to be clever. I'm just That's saying true, this, you know, like, um, you know, when they, when they knock you now, they go, oh, you know, your business wasn't that good and you was this, you was that. And I, I just say, who drives the Mini and who drives the Rolls Royce? Simple, isn't it? Fair enough. As a mini. <laughs> um, no, you know what I'm saying. Look, yeah. you, you know, you know, 
if it stacks up, it stacks up. And, and the one thing that no one could ever take away from us is start with a, a little old van, bag of tools, apprentice, and you sell it for about 140 odd mil. You know what I mean? Uh, look, I hope many people do that, and I'm sure they will. Yeah. But, you know, that stacks up, doesn't it? Do you, th do you think it's like a unicorn, you would call it, as in it's like it's a one-off, or do you think anybody coming into the trades could have a possibility to do well, that? I think they've got a better chance now than years ago, yeah. because you, you're more respected as a plumber. They expect you to be a lot more money. I mean, I've got to be honest, when I was an apprentice, going around Amsterdam, Parliament Hill, you go to the front door and have like tradesmen around the back. You know what I mean? Fucking go all around, take your shoes. When I was doing it now in the eating place, you're like, oh, thanks for like, like welcome, building. Yeah, welcome, you know, yeah. can I get you a tea? I'll do your dinner. Yeah. But years ago, it was get around the back, like, yeah. you know, and they didn't talk to you. But now it's changed. It's trendy to be a plumber. It's trendy to be a tradesman. Um, and, you know, why would you not want to be one? Because you're going to earn loads of money and never be out of work. No, definitely. And that, so that 145 mil, is that what it went for in the end? Something like that. I mean, there, there was, no, uh, there, there was like 10% of my son, who, or a lot of the family worked there. Um, and, and he had another 10% in the company. And I'm not, I'm not going to say anything bad about the company because, you know, they'd be on me case like, um, but they're allegedly not doing so well. And he had a few months, he just couldn't put up with them. They're just doing it the American way, no personal service. Yes. Um, even things like, which I find uh, unbelievable, you could do that. They don't even answer the phone. It's fucking done by machine. So e emails and automation. That's. I don't know. Machine does it. Even the machine picks who's going. Mm. And you know, I'm telling you now, the, the business we run, and like many businesses, it's a personal service. The contact with people. People. I mean, I, I don't do business with people with machines. I mean, if I can talk to someone. Yeah. And I want to order this and that. That's what I do. If they're working from home, I don't do business with them. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, we run it on a... a per I mean, plumbing is... Or building trade. It's very personal when you're in someone's house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they reckon this, this machine picks the plumber. Well, we had it worked out. We, 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 we would go... First of all, you go by the job. And you got... There's only certain people, you know... You don't send a tap washer guy to put a new boiler in or put a bathroom in. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? And so... We graded all their engineers all along the boards, at top carpenters, and you know, so the best job goes to the best man, doesn't it? Yeah. And you marry up the, the right job with the right engineer first, then you marry up the customer. So you might have very posh people, and you know, they don't want no, no sort of young lad in there that's you know, talking about football, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so you get a more mature plumber, and then you'll get, you know, uh, I don't know, another house where. There's some girls from college and, you know, they're more happier with, you know, someone they can talk to. So what, what we've done there, we, we, the job's the most important thing. You've married out with the engineer, then you marry up. The customer's got to be right. And then you've got to make sure the area's right. Like, you know, you wouldn't send a top plumber halfway across London. You know, and I you send... the nice time driving then. And... Well, that's it. I mean, you send, like, the lower end, you let him travel all day. And your plumber will be there, and when Eaton Place rings or Chelsea Square, it goes there, you know what I mean? People could never work out how we got there so quick. We should have a system, we're guaranteed within the hour, no problem did you at have all. Like, did you have the vans tracked? Did you know where they were? Yeah. Like, so, so yeah, but, so we, did you well, have, we had it, but we didn't need that because... Did you have people watching the vans all day and then going, no, like, this is coming, no, there it goes. No, what happened, you give an engineer a job, yeah. and he's in South West One. Yeah. So on the board, you mark up South West One, then he'll ring you in with a time. And if it changes, we've been, you know, if he says, I'll be here all day, all day, simple. Yeah. If he says about four o'clock, and if it's going to change, he'd come on to you, not within half an hour or so. And then you get a punt to come on and say, oh, I've got a leak, and, you know, what's coming you get here? Well, he finished at four, quarter past four, and they're like, I can't believe it. So they were just all on the move constantly. Yeah, and, and, and people couldn't work it out. It's just, you know, some guys were staying in areas all day. But uh, again, you, you don't send top engineers travelling all over London. You know what I mean? It must have been quite an operation then. In the, yeah, but it's not, that show. it's not that complicated. Yeah. Yeah, people complicate. But surely with the volume, it must have got quite complicated at some point. I don't, I don't see it because, you know, you have people giving out the jobs. And, you know, there's someone will come on the phone and go, um, oh, Water pissing through the ceiling in Chelsea, how quick can you get here? They'd talk to him on the boards there. He'd look along the boards, he'd go, um, oh, we've got someone's available now. It's going to take off. It's not complicated. And if you have more people than 
you, what you think you need. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You're not yeah. struggling. It's like with vans. People don't get it. If, you, if you've got 200 vans on the road, you need 220. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, like so many engineers... So you always think be one step ahead of what you need. Like, for, for example, what you did with the, the premises at um, yeah. Sale Street, it's like it was too big for you at that time, but you moved into it and then you filled yeah, well, it out. To, to be honest, you know, I don't say it's the best way to do it, but it worked for me. It works. And, and I think myself... So they it's like stretching the comfort zone, really, and then going... Well, right that's, that's it, but... Like, you didn't want to see empty vans sitting there, so you'd start to try and want to fill them. Yeah, that's it. I mean, then we got... I mean, when we had the building in the end, then we had about 15 railway arches, all 3,000 square foot. Um... You know, and, and that's it. You, you, you sort of build it all in, and, and I don't think it's anything clever. I think it's just, it's just doing it the right way. You know what I mean? It's like uniform and that. You, you know, uniform so important, so important. Everyone in the office had it. We used, we used to get a lot of TV work because of that, because we're a smart outfit. And you know yourself, if if you've got a uniform on and you're proud to wear it, you you behave yourself, didn't you? You know what I mean? You know, we used to have the guys on the train or, or the girls, and um, you know, they might have had a fucking row with someone or something. And someone would ring up, oh, look, can you have one of your, you know. Yeah, uh, one of your workers is... Yeah, and, and, they go, and they go, I fucking can't believe it. I made Pimlico come. Well, you know, that's, you know, yeah. obviously you slip up, but in general... I think you sort of party something as well, if everybody's all wearing the same uniforms and the same course. branded vans. It's like, it's a it, community. Look, I, I mean, I find the uniform simple. Um, we even had a thing, and I, have to, I came up with it, we, we saw all the girls wear white blouses and the guys, and was trying to distinguish, you know, like managers and that. So I kind of an idea that, um, all right, we put managers in a striped shirt, blue striped shirt, a bit dearer. And of course, all the other lot wanted to get a striped shirt, you know what I mean? Then I come up with another one where we made them assistant managers, and the top managers, they had like this real, like, quality one. Yeah. So you can walk in a room now and know who's who, mm -hmm. and I used to think, I used to think myself, and sometimes I see like a guy, of, I'm thinking Keith been in a couch since we were about 15, and I see he had this striped shirt, and I said, something I said to him one day, he, he obviously deserved it, and I went, I can't believe you ain't had the, like, the proper manager's shirt. Yeah, he went, no, I've been here like 10 years. I was like, leave it with me. And they love it, you know what I mean? I didn't give it to him. Yeah. He did deserve it, yeah. but I thought to myself, he's been here since a kid, you know what yeah. I mean? And But everyone was trying to strive yeah. to get to the next bit. And same with on the board. Yeah. Top engineers, top engineer be less callbacks, does the most work, yeah. most testimonials, you know, all, all the bits that, that go it. And the bottom ones are obvious, and, and the top ones used to have the newer van and the better the number plate. You wouldn't believe that, would you? No. Like, the bottom ones might have like a two bob number plate, or not even a number yeah. plate. Geezer at the top would have shower, drain, bog, toilet, uh, flush. And, Makes yeah, a difference. Yeah, and, and you know, I used to say to people, you can tell how much an engineer earns by the number plate. Yep. The better the number plate, the more money, you know what I mean? Yep. And, and they was all jumping for that, you know what I mean? And, all, and we used to have a thing where when the new vans come in, they'd always go to the top engineers and they pass them down. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, some engineers, you know, I, I would say might have two new vans a year, you know what I mean? And, and everyone loves a new van. And did you ever run out of people? Or were you all, did you always find that there was enough people? Because I know there's a, like, there's a, it's big skill shortage in the construction yeah, look, I think when, Did you always do all right? Because I know that yeah. a, lot of, a lot of people were queuing up to work for Pimlico. Yeah, really. look, well, uh, we had it right in the end. And if you've got it right, people want to be with And you know yourself, it's all about money. If you pay the right money. We used to give a lot of air engineers so many incentives. Like, you know, we, we used to have like different categories, about 30 categories a month. We'd have, you know, smartest apprentice, the one who's got the most um, testimonials of an engineer. The one who's been the most helpful is the smartest girl in the office. Like all the uniform, and it just changes people. Yeah. And and on that one, I think we should give them different. We had quite a lot of merchandise, so we give them a voucher for the merchandise. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds, but you know, and they uh, buy all the merchandise, and then we'd also give them vouchers to use in their canteen. Yeah. And then, did you have a gym at one time as well? Did you? Oh, gym, oh, gym, yeah, yeah. 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 You see that kind of. <laughs> um, one of the things I think. Uh, many tradesmen and many people in life is we don't really realise what we can get to, you know what I mean? We just don't, we think, I mean, I only ever wanted to be a plumber. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've gone from that to running a plumbing company kind yeah. of thing, you know, I hated school and all of a sudden I'm like, you know, doing that and I'm thinking, you know, you don't know you're capable, you know what I mean? I, I had worked it out, if I just carry on plumbing all my life, I'll earn plenty of dosh and never be out of work. And that was it. But 
all of a sudden, you know... You become a businessman, you, be, yeah. you become famous. Yeah. Well, you go and do all the PR, you... Yeah, I mean, you know, it's out there. And it's not simple, but it's like... It can, it, those can happen, you know what I mean? I mean, so many, I mean, I started up with a, we should buy a van from an auction, like 35 quid, you know what I mean? And, uh, like, you, you know, and you think, and, and to be honest, I should uh, drive in, I should have, like, some carpenter guy working with me, like, um, and this is me just plumbing, and, and uh, like, when I first started off, like, and um, I see, like, a Rolls Royce, and I see some, like, posho in the back with a cigar, and I used to go, Oh, that'll be me one day. And I was tongue in cheek, yeah. but it was me one day. You've I don't got, smoke cigar. <laughs> you've got a lot of self belief, though, haven't you? You got a what? You've got a lot of self belief. Yeah. Like yeah. It, lo- it looks as though you've always believed in yourself, no matter what. Well, I, I, f- I think you know. Did you need? More... Did you need to make yourself be? No, that? actually, you know. Did you, you need to just force that yeah. and just keep going with it? For me, it was just about survival and making money. Like as a kid, like many people, was poor. Um, you backed yourself though you, you backed yourself didn't you yeah well I think you know when I got into the plumbing I mean like a kid like many people do loads of jobs I should work in a chip shop like I weren't peeling potatoes but taking the eyes out you know what I mean and you think you know people don't do that today they were delivering milk and they weren't on one of them wagons I should push this trolley around um, I don't know if you know about bag wash you know bag wash no people didn't have washing machines so, oh, so they take it to the laundry is that no they take it to a shop right and he would he send it off and get it all oh, washed yeah, and clean. Yeah. Then when it come back, you have to deliver it on a Saturday. So he'd drive it, crafty fucker, and, and he'd send me up with no, not the lifts. He'd run up all up the blocks of flats like, yeah. oh, you take that one, you crafty fucker. But that's what he do, doesn't it? But so he, hard work, definitely. Yeah, hard but, you, work, but then you get a tip from that. that that's, he didn't give you no money, but you got a tip. Mm. Like, so the time you got up the top, he was tied in there, but you used to milk it. <gasps> so the person who was taking the bag would give you the Yeah, bag. they'd give you a tip. Yeah. they pay for it. Yeah. But they give you a tip, and um, you know, and then and then you know, I used to. Do you know what errands are? Running errands, mm-hmm. and I used to come home from school. So somebody would maybe need something here, and then they would go over there. Well, and I, I thought, you know, I thought I, I thought I was going to go to prison, but what I done, I, I was like, I used to come home from school, and you know, it was poor family, like um, you know, like many people, you know what I mean, um, and uh, I'd go to the greengrocers for her. And the old woman in there, she, I mean, she must have been about 100, and she couldn't get out or nothing, because, you know, in them days, you're in a shop on your own. And she said to me, oh, can you, I say, what, what errands you want? She said, can you go to the news agency and get me some snuff? I'll just go there, and then I'll say to him, what do you want? And he go, couldn't go up to the green road, just get me some potatoes, could you? And I used to think, I was getting double money. Yep. And then I'd go, one of them was then say, I need something from the dairy. I go in the dairy. She'd say, I need some fags. Mm-hmm. And I, I used to be like, I thought, oh, if they find out. Because she used to give me fruitmans, he'd give me fruitmans. And you know what I'm trying to say? You had to go in. I thought, I just, and I never let on to it. You know what I mean? I never let on to the shop. And I thought, fucking how clever is that? You know what I mean? Yeah. All what's gone on on the way. And then I got OBE yeah. for plumbing services. I know yeah. you, you was going to mention that. <laughs> um, and, and that's, you know, you know, how would you ever... Exactly exactly work on apprenticeships as well? Yeah, or, uh, it's not... Look, I, I, I do do work for charity and a lot of people get them for charity, but mine weren't for charity. It was for plumbing services. And a lot of people find that hard to believe because, you know, we all do charity. Of course we do. And, and if I'd have got it for charity, I'd, I'd be over the moon. But it happens to be for apprentices and plumbing service and an all-round thing. And, you know, and, and again, you know... That ain't something you expect, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, not, not us type of people, but it's out there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're moving on OBE, and then we sell the company two, uh, 24, 28 months ago, and we have a three year clause in it and where we can't trade again for three years. And that's a non compete agreement, so, yeah. sort of idea. Yeah. Right. And, and that's okay, you know what I mean? Um, we took a nice break, but all of a sudden, want to go again. We, we've Got the building, we started getting the vans, we're doing a lot of work on it. Uh, we're going to run it just like before, but better. Yeah. So it'll be eating plumbing drains. It's called We Fix, We Fix London. And um, the most important thing we're going to do is I mean, we ain't trying to run the other people out of town. They're, you know, mm-hmm. they're, 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 I think they're the biggest home service company in the world, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, you know, they're going to have to up the game if they want to, if they want to stay ahead of us. Mm-hmm. But the vans are going to be better, the office staff are going to be better, the engineers are going to be better. Um, 
And we ain't going to be cheap. You know do you I mean? feel as though you've got some like unfinished business from Pimlico? Do you, do, do you regret selling it, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the comeback to... Yeah, I mean... To look, just it, do, do what you would have done not, if you'd It's stayed, not a personal maybe. thing, but I think, you know, sometimes when you, you know, the ultimate aim, I think, well, it's in business that you start a business and you sell it the other end. Yeah. And, and There's got to be an exit. Part. Yeah, but so many people don't get to that stage or they give it away or they get ill or they run it down or they give it to their family and it goes wrong. And I think, you know, when you start off with a business, you, you're always thinking, you can't believe you're going to sell it and you're thinking, you know, the other end. And then when you get to that and I'm thinking, and you know, I'm doing other business. I'm, not, I'm not, obviously not a retired type. Um, you know, I've got other things going on and um, a lot of PR kind, kind of thing. But... You know, I've got, you know, quite a big family, kids and grandkids and great-grandchildren. And, you know, it's a marvellous business that we had. I don't want to be back there, you know, full-time kind of thing, but I'm happy to do the PR and give my input. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that, I think we're going to have a, an unbelievable company. Will you take it out of London or are you keeping it in London again? At the moment, you've got to start with London. There's a lot of work in London. Um, I know you'd said before that with Pimlico you maybe would have you maybe yeah, would look, have expanded you know, when I look back on it we could have gone bigger and, and that was probably the reason I sold it because I felt at that time that this could go everywhere and you know I didn't really seem I'm not going to say I didn't have the drive but you know you know what I mean one man can't do it all don't get me wrong we had a great load of workers there you know wife's working their girlfriends not at the same time <laughs> Um, but you know we had quite a lot of family, uh, uh, grandkids and kids, and yeah. And it, I felt that it needed to go further. Yeah. And you know we picked and choose who, who, who bought it. There was other people, a lot of people in the game that was happy to pay the money. And um, these stood out. And I say I'm not gonna it's a knock them. They're the biggest home service company in the world. But where they're going wrong is. They're doing it the American way and not the personal service, you know what I mean? And, you know, it wasn't that I've got to answer the phone, but you've got to have people answering the phone. You've got to have, like, I mean, I say, how can a machine pick what plumber? They pick this plumber because he might be the other side of London, but he's on the list. And I'm thinking, are you, you know... You so you think no matter the size and the scale, you've got to keep the personal touch there? Oh, of course. Definitely. I mean, I, I won't deal with machines. A lot of people won't. Um, people tell me now, email me this email, I'll just take my order. I'm giving him my order, I'll fucking email you, am I? And, you know, and, and you, a lot of people are like that, you know what I mean? They, you know, and I'm telling you now, when, when a customer's got a plumbing problem, it's hard to write it down, yeah. you know what I mean? They, they can't speak to someone. Of course they go, look. Because they, they're stressed as well. Yeah, and they're saying, look, I think the leak's getting worse and, you know, and, you know, I'm not sure what it is and, yeah. you know, and you say, well, look, you, you know, and, and, you know, you reassure people and, yeah. you know, but are you sure you're going to be getting here and, you know, will the engineer be able to do it? You know what I mean? I said, well, you know, every day we turn up at houses, you know, we're not perfect and every day we, we come away with the money and you will not pay the money until it's sorted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just all common sense things and... So we're going to run it like Pimlico. It's going to be a top quality service. And again, I learned in business, the people will always pay for quality. You know, if you want a Savile Row suit, as you said, you go and buy a Savile Row suit. And, you know, there's a market out there. And, yeah. you know, we was never a cut price plumbing outfit and we won't be now. But we will, we, we'll have the best uniform, we'll have the best fan, best staff in the office, best guys out on the road, uh, best PR team. I, I, I mean... You know, we had our own PR company, PR team in, yeah. in within the building. But it's not clever. It's been going on forever. It, it's picking out what you feel is going to work for you. And, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's like people who's going to meet, you know, we're probably on the telly, obviously, always once a week and done probably about 10 documentaries. And people go to me, oh, I thought you said the wrong thing on the telly. And I, I think... You're going to fucking laugh, are you? You just went on news at 10 for a minute. You know what I mean? And and then I learn, uh, you know, you learn off other people. And my answer, they go, well, I don't think it went down too well and all that. I said, well, put it like this. I'd rather it be my plumbing company on there than any other plumbing company. And that's how you've got to think. You know, we, we're not perfect people. But, you know, just a plumber going on the telly talking about politics or employment or, mm -hmm. you know, or... Unfair dismissal and all that nonsense. Um, you know, it, it's constantly putting your company on the it's map. Massive, 
you know, and it wasn't just me doing the marketing, you know, mm. loads of them would do it. And, you know, they, they would come to us all, all the time, the telly, Sky, there was only our crossroad. They'd give us half hour notice, never say no, just turn up, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we employed the oldest worker in Europe. Uh, did you ever read that story? Yeah, that, yeah. Buster. 101, was he? 100, no, no. Well, we took him on when he was 99. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And, uh, and it, just, just again, he used to go out with an old driver, give him something, he used to get him out of the home, and he walked past a depot, and, you know, I'd, I'd be out there make myself busy, like, you know what I mean? And, and um, I used to give him a score, like, for a drink, he'd go down the boozer, and he was Proud man, you know, and he said, oh, I don't need your money, son, and all that. Let me do a bit of work. And, you know, you know I said, yeah, that's all right, bus. What do you want to do, sweep up or something? No, nah, no, he said, I'll wash the vans. And uh, anyhow, I, I, you know, going along with him, give him a few scores. He turned up one morning, he was there before me about six o'clock. Like, that was before we used to be mm -hmm. in the building all the time. And um, come in there, started washing vans. And, you know, so that was on a, a Monday, started. On Wednesday, we had... Every newspaper down there, I got some PR people, and I said, what do you think? They went, done. All his work in Europe. I mean, amazing, the guy. And we, used to, we even brought our beer out, Buster's Bitter, for him, like, and he was on all the shows, but he was a bit aggressive, you know what I mean, like, yeah. old fellow and that, like. So he couldn't understand, you know, we used to well pay him, but he couldn't understand, oh, fucking Vanessa Felt wants me there, you know, she's telling me I can't sit here. <laughs> you know what I mean, Jeremy Cole, and I'm thinking, oh my God, it's freaking no. 100 quid, 100 grand a minute, and you're all like having a stream up. And, um, but we looked after him very well, and even times, you know, he'd sit down on the stool watching the man, but it just, it was just like, it, it brought a lot to it. I mean, he fought in more wars. He could tell a story, you know what I mean, than what we've had, you know? And, and yeah, he, he joins 99. And when he was 97, I kept him out of the way. I'm thinking, what a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? And then I said to someone, I said, well, he came in when he was 97. He said, you shouldn't have done that, Josh. He just took this. He said, you might not have got to 99. <laughs> See, 99 is like a cricket, and then 99, 100, isn't it? And yeah, he, he stayed with us till he was 104. And, um, and, and unfortunately passed away. But in the end, he, he didn't like, he didn't work full time like on the vans. He used right. to take his mum and dad shopping in the afternoons. Yeah. Come on, mum and dad. <laughs> <laughs> wasted. <laughs> wasted. A final message then to anybody looking to get into the construction industry? Oh, I think it's the best thing out there. Oh, you know, if you can get an apprenticeship, you're, you're definitely on the winner. Even if you don't get an apprenticeship, just to get into the building industry, it's a winner. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but Albert Einstein, you know him, obviously. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a true story, right? It's not a joke, right? right okay. It's a true story. He, he says, I don't, you check this out. Albert Einstein says, if he was to come back again, he would come back as a plumber. That's a true story. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. Like, check it out. <laughs> no, check it out. And, and if I was to come back again, I'd come back as Albert Einstein. <laughs> oh, I would, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, Brilliant, but, Charlie. Thanks well so much for coming on for our 50th episode. Well done, mate. <laughs>